everybody and welcome to Health Talk. I am your host, Dr. Niru Prasad, with my background in pediatrics and emergency medicine, affiliated with Henry Ford Health System, St. Joe, Oakland, and Beaumont. The theme of our Health Talk is, a, a, is the, is the awareness, breast cancer awareness, I have a guest speaker, Katrina Sturtevant, who is a COO Development and Engagement of Gilda's Club. And she's going to tell us all about the Gilda Club, how they help the, how they help the survivors of the breast cancer as well as their family. It is a big support group and uh, and I welcome to have Kat Katrina as my guest speaker from Gilda Club. Thank you for having me, Dr. Okay. Prasad. So good morning. I'm so happy to have you. And I just forgot that many years ago you were here with the Carmanos. <laughs> yes. So I was, I was wondering if you can give your introduction to our viewers. Absolutely. So as you know, I'm here on behalf of Gilda's Club Metro Detroit. We are a 100% free, no cost, cancer support community. And our goal really is to make sure that no one faces cancer alone. Whether you are diagnosed, in treatment, or post-treatment, surviving or thriving, you and your loved ones can gain support at our community um, locations. So that's good, yeah. So now you tell me about a little bit more about the Gilda's Club, how long it has been there and... Absolutely, well you probably are familiar with the name Gilda, as Gilda, in Gilda Ratner from Saturday Night Live. She was oh. one of the uh, inaugural cast members. Oh and many God. people remember Rosanna Gilda. Dana, that's the first thing that comes out their mouth. They say, where is Gilda? <laughs> yes, and so as many may know, she was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, she passed away. Mm -hmm. But her community came together and wanted to do something about it. She had a personal experience where she herself sought out a community for herself while going through cancer. At first she was a little reluctant, mm -hmm. but then once she joined the community, she thought it was one of the she, best things that she could have had during that time. Mm -hmm. And so her personal community, her husband at the time and other fellow cast members and friends mm -hmm. came together to start so, Gilda's so Club. So they started the, they they saw started the Gilda. It. I remember that yes. I was familiar with And it was brought to Metro Detroit by eight women who saw this and said, you know, we're, she's from our state. She's oh. our home. She's home grown and so we should have these mm -hmm. same type of services here in Metro Detroit sure. and so yeah so eight women started the services over 25 years ago oh okay so now Katrina I think you are yourself a cancer survivor I am yeah so could you just give tell your story yes my <laughs> story unfortunately is becoming common and the really? reason why I say that is because um, women of color, younger women of color, yeah, are being yeah, diagnosed I more I often. A, I have a sad story myself, one of our close friend's daughter, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so myself, I was diagnosed at 30 um, with stage 3 breast cancer. Oh. And just as many young women, I'm thinking it's just me getting older. I felt oh. something, but I had just no. had a baby, and I was newly married over a year. And, and you so, did not want to? You no, you wasn't thought thinking <laughs> cancer, right? No thought in my head. Okay. But I did feel something in my, uh, at the time, my doctor said, you know, we need to get you a mammogram. So I had my first mammogram at 30. Okay. Oh, okay. And they did detect something. From there, I had um, a biopsy. Mm -hmm. And with that biopsy, it came back to be positive for breast cancer. Was and it a doctor? doctor? It, it was at the time. Um, however, it did spread outside of right. the lump. Yeah, okay. So I did have a mastectomy, mm -hmm. and after mastectomy, I had chemotherapy. Chemotherapy. But I'm happy to say that was 16 years ago, so. Good, good. <laughs> I'm a 16-year cancer survivor. You surviving. look great. Thank you. Katrina, Thank you, you look great. Young and uh, beautiful. Thank yeah. you. So, so this is what happened, you know. Now, we normal, the protocol, you know, the health screening and all that, you know, they have everything done by the regular physicians, right? Correct. Breast screening, mammogram, and all those things. 
But I have noticed that since the COVID is started, you know, people have not been going to the, for their checkups, and this is what happened, you know. So tell us, tell us some more about lack of screening yes. during COVID and there's a rise in, rise yes. in incidents. It's projected yeah. that there will be a rise, unfortunately, right. in diagnosis of cancer, um, of various types of cancer, because people prolonged going to get screened due to right. COVID. Right, so we all know that early detection is really what saves lives. And so unfortunately, with a year to two years, and now we're continuing on in right. these COVID times and trying to manage it, the reality is people miss their screenings. And so there may be diagnosis um, because of those missed screenings. And the reality is um, some types of cancer are um, livable. They are survivable. They are survivable. They're survivable if caught early, right? Better than nobody and cancer. Better, yes. And, and so yeah. with that, the reality is our services will continuously be needed. We have over 17 million survivors and that really? number is going to continue to grow so, in, in, yeah. This, yeah, in the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so services like ours that support ongoing the yeah. life of the patient, the life of the survivor, the life of the thriver, mm -hmm. we're going to be needed. And so yes. in Metro Detroit, we've expanded now to three locations. We Is used to just so? have our, our main clubhouse mm -hmm. in Royal Oak. But yeah. now we're in Detroit and we're in St. Clair Shores so that we can really cover, you know, southeastern Michigan with the support care that support they need, care. the individuals right. need. Yeah. And how, uh, how are you funded? So we have many grant funders that we're funded Correct. through, and we're very grateful for both our grant funders, our sponsors. Mm -hmm. We have three purposeful signature events. We have our big night out, Gilda's. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have our fun walk and run. It's a 5K. Oh, and then we 5K, have bras yeah, for a yeah. cause. So those are our three signature three events. Yeah. And we obviously obtain sponsorships to support our programming so that we can continue to keep it at no cost. Right. For the for the yeah. patient and their loved ones. Yeah. So basically, the sponsors are the one who support it, and the and the and the patient and yes. the victims. Along with individual donors, we have plenty. Individual yeah, donors. grateful donors that we are so yeah. appreciative of. Yeah. Right. So that's very interesting to know. You know that for the for for our community to know that there are three centers, and depending upon where they live the close by will be to go where? Yeah, it will be most convenient for them. And we have a fourth location that's oftentimes convenient for everyone, including the patients that are immunocompromised going uh -huh. through treatment. And that's our virtual location. Oh, the virtual. And yeah. our virtual location <laughs> thrived during you know, COVID. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the virtual. Tell me more about the yes, virtual. Yeah, so right at the, at the um, shutdown time period of our community, um, mm -hmm. we had to pivot. And we had to pivot oh. fast because our, our community needed support the even virtual, though yeah. we were going through COVID. They needed it probably much more than others because mm -hmm. they were not only navigating cancer, but now they're navigating COVID. COVID and so yeah. we immediately, not missing a beat or one day of service to our community, we were able to pivot to virtual programming. So all of our support uh, groups are, are located on virtual. We also have a healthy lifestyle activities yeah. from cheer yoga to yeah, yeah. Healthy you know, holistic lifestyle. nutritional cooking classes. Yeah. We have social engagement. We had dance parties during oh COVID, Scrabble. I mean, we just tried to make sure that anybody impacted by cancer and their loved ones didn't feel alone during that time. Right, yeah, so that's very good. So when they when they are, when they are asking for the virtual, they, then you have somebody assigned to them for that particular day, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, there is yeah. there is a facilitator so, for each of our programs, and our facilitators, just so you know, they are um, they are experts in their own right. Either oh. they're clinical um, mm -hmm. clinical professionals that uh, guide our support groups, or they themselves are certified in yoga or certified Yo, in right here, yeah. certified in some of the other programs. That is very offer. good to know, Katrina. Yes. That is such a good thing to know about your cancer support services. I caught, uh, this caught my attention because the October is supposed to be Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, I started looking for for those people or oncologists or surgeons. But unfortunately, I could not get any of them. They, 
So then finally, you know, my friend suggested that Dr. Prasad, I will find you something from the Gildas Club. And that's how I knew about you. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. And we partner with all of the health systems across Metro Detroit. Uh, we also partner with the federally qualified health clinics as well. Because yeah. we know those that are underserved still yeah. need to get equitable treatment and support. Okay. What age group, because you have so much up you have seen so many. What yes. age groups are you seeing? That's a great the question. Yeah, so the yeah. reality what are is the age group? we have support for children, oh, even okay. toddlers. We have toddler time. Oh, is that so? Yeah, we have toddler time because we know, unfortunately, children are impacted by cancer. Right. So we, we offer support to children, teens, mm -hmm. young adults, older young adults, adults, and also all communities. Right, yeah, yeah. So that's very interesting for our viewers to know that with the, it is a free cancer support services at the Gilda's Club. And you know, you individually, you focus your attention. So whoever comes, what kind of cancer malignancy they have and what kind of support they need. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, okay. But most of the incidents I see in the young age group now, you know, the young age group like 18, 20, 24. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, at, there was a time where there were fewer younger people diagnosed. Most of but them but elderly people. Older, yeah. yeah older, older people, yeah. But the, but the reality, unfortunately, especially people of color um, are being yeah. diagnosed younger. And like I said, I was 29 when I felt something. I was diagnosed that same year at 30. I just had my oh. birthday. Oh. Um, so, and it was stage three. So you yeah. can only imagine if I had waited till I was 40 to get that first mammogram, I probably wouldn't be here. Yeah, you are right, you are right. Yeah. So I always tell people, if you know something's going on, you know, you are your best expert of your body. You right. feel something different, you know something going on, you see something. Because yeah. for breast cancer specifically, there's more signs of breast cancer that you see first sure. before feeling a lump. Sure. Um, do something about it. Have a conversation with your doctor, your physician, right. yeah. and then see what the next step is for sure. you to get it. Early detected. diagnosis, earlier the diagnosis is made, you yes. know, that goes for anything. Absolutely. Earlier the diagnosis is made, you know, the better, better prognosis, the prognosis, better treatment options, better mm -hmm. outcomes if it's caught early. So yeah. I know sometimes fear can yeah. be that, that thing that, you know, encompasses us, but yeah. we have to put that fear aside and yeah. do something about it if we really want to make sure that we are saving our okay. lives. Do you see some men also? Men do get breast cancer, absolutely. Yeah, mostly the doctor. Yes, yeah, and, and we I, also it's... have male support groups as well. Okay. Prostate, men come in obviously with lung disease at times mm -hmm. and other types of cancer, but we sure. do have a male specific support group. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. you, because I remember uh, Katrina a long time ago working at the emergency room. I saw a 24, 25 year old you know, patient guy came with his wife because two, three times he, he went to his physician with sore throat, had a big gland, and they diagnosed him mono, mm. infectious mono. But mm. then when he came, I looked at him, you know, he looked so sick, pale, and I said, hey, look, uh, even if you have mono, I would like to get some. Something, something strike my instinct, you know. So we got his x-ray of the neck area, big lymphoma, okay. big one, pressure. Yes. So we sent him to Carmano and then, you know, he got. So, so to tell you the truth, I think when we are working as a clinician, we have to keep this in mind that women, yes, but men also can be involved, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we have we we really see the mm. entire family um, yeah. because the caregiver is important as well. And we have oh, yeah, caregiver tell about support. The care, the Absolutely, I think yeah. oftentimes when we mm. think of the patient, we're we're focused on getting the patient through treatment, making sure that they're adhering to their you know their treatment protocol and that they're getting better. 
But oftentimes there's also the same impact on the caregiver. The caregiver has to be navigated, has to be supported. Yeah, because this navigate. is new territory most often to a caregiver to give care at that level for right, a cancer yeah. diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And so we do offer caregiver support at Gilda's Club as well. Yeah, so that is very good because nowadays, you know, not talking about this issue of breast cancer, elderly population, so many debilitating illnesses, mm -hmm. and the caregivers are there. So they should yes. be trained at least to recognize, you know, some mm -hmm. Giving the symptoms. support that they need, they may have some tangible needs that they may not be able to address because, you know, unfortunately they, their time is spent trying to care for yeah, that yeah, loved yeah. one, right? Yeah, fortunate yeah. that they're there, but unfortunate that their life too gets impacted by a diagnosis as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's good. So what else do you have uh, now that is a right diagnosis? How to access your support? Absolutely. So you, this can, is, yeah, you, you can, can access talk. us a number of ways. One okay. of the first ways I'll say, because it's the easiest, is online at our website, on. gildasclubdetroit.org. And there you'll find out about our programming at all three locations, as, mm -hmm. as well as our virtual. And you can also learn more about our lecture series. Right now we have a very um, important lecture series that's focused on triple negative breast cancer. Yeah, yeah. Which is, as you know, one of the more challenging cancers. Right, um, yeah. And oftentimes younger women are diagnosed with triple yeah. negative. And women they of color. The HERS 2 and HERS 3, which one respond to the hormones and which yes. one is... Yeah, and then this one doesn't, right? Doesn't, right. So we have that. It is a very that. interesting topic now. Absolutely, absolutely. The hormones supported group. Yeah. of the cancer and non hormone Absolutely. Yeah. And then we also, you can walk into our locations. As I said, we're located in Royal Oak, mm -hmm. um, Rochester Road. We're located in Detroit at Durfee Innovation Society. So yeah. right on the west side, Linwood and Dexter area on Collingwood. Mm -hmm. And then we're located in St. Clair Shores on Perry. It used to be the Perry Elementary School. It's oh, now okay nonprofits no. at Perry. <laughs> so those are our three brick and mortar locations in our virtual location. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I really thank you. You, you drove all the way and uh, um, I'm delighted to be here thank you yeah, so much yeah, for having very, us and I'm very happy you know yeah. that you came because unfortunately our friend could not make it today but then I am glad I have you well you're allowing me to spread the word so I appreciate it because our services are there for everyone yeah so what would you like to advise your you know to the advice your advice to our listeners who are listening so to I think the main thing I would say is get mm. screened if you are at the age where you are screening age mm -hmm. get screened whether it's colorectal cancer lung cancer prostate cancer breast cancer mm -hmm. get your screenings right and know what's normal for you the mm -hmm. second thing is if you are diagnosed we're here for you yeah, our, our whole goal is that no one faces cancer along so this right, club yeah. is here join the club so so now i like to thank you so much uh, katrina for coming to my show i like to thank our viewers for attending me on this very interesting cancer support services the gilda's club with the guest speaker katrina and until i see you all again have a very safe and a wonderful winter and holidays. Thank you again.